demonstration of how to draw a glass of wine and a bottle and a couple of grapes. And this is something I did on a pre-trial and uh, it didn't quite um, show up as well. So I'm going to attempt to do this again, but I want to just take a minute and describe how this took place. And that is, we, um, I divided this board into threes, one, two, three, and one, two, three. And I wanted to know exactly where the middle is by this uh, part, which is right here. And what you want to do when you do a drawing is not have anything smack dab in the middle. We call it a bullseye. So it would be a good idea to know where the middle is and then know to avoid it as far as having something exactly in the middle. Um, how you draw a, a glass of wine or a bottle is by first drawing T's. So you draw one solid line down the middle and then where there is going to be changes in the shape, you'll have T's, what I call T's, which would be just across a, um, over that line. And you'll see that I've done it in different places. Like here, there's a line going all the way through the bottle. Here, there's a line going all the way through the glass. And then there's a T going across where this ellipse is going to go. There's a T going across where these, this part of the glass changes into this round part. And then it goes through the stem. There's a T down here where the bottom of the stem is. And, a t and it goes all the way across to where the uh, ellipse at the bottom is. And this is the base of the glass. Um, Perspective-wise, the ellipses are thinner at the top, and you can see over here that the glass is thinner here, then it cu cuts in the stem, and then there's the fatter or more rounder base. Same with the bottle. The bottle has a thinner ellipse here. It starts to get fatter in the shoulder area here, and that should have a T across there. And then down here, a, a bigger, wider circle for the base. All of that is a perspective that helps, uh, helps you get a, a look of a bottle that um, doesn't read flat. So, uh, and then you have your little grapes that are organic, so they don't need teas or anything. They just need a little bit of shading and a highlight. So I've um, brought up a new board and um, quickly, I'm just gonna know that this is the center of my board. So I wanna stay away from that. I'm gonna draw my lines and having a, a what is this called, a level, you can get straight lines by just lining up the bubble. So if that's, uh, so we want to do that. I'm just going to bring this over just a little bit. I want the middle of my glass about right there. And then my bottle. Right there. And so when you look over here, there's an angle here. So I want to kind of mock that a little bit and have that angle. So what I'm going to do is just kind of draw a little bit of an angle like that. So this gives me the top of my, uh, I want to do a T at the top of my bottle. I want to do a T where the shoulders are. And where the shoulders are are about the same, where they kind of start rounding, are about the same as when this, where this glass starts rounding. So what I want to decide is, okay, here's my the top of my glass, and put that in the bubble. Here's the top of my bottle, which looks like it should be a little taller. Move up here. All right, and then um, where the change is, 
on both of them would be about right here. So I'm just going to draw a line all the way across and that will help me match these up well. And then not the same angle as what it is from top to bottom because these are on the same close to the same plane but there is a little bit of an angle here in the drawing so what I want to do is maybe angle that angle that and then I want to do the bottoms of these so this one's going to be a little bit lower than the bottle go across there and then across there. Now the key to these these T's is to have the same or keep the same on both sides of them equal uh, in your ellipse. So I'm going to start with the ellipse on the glass. So I want to I want to look at the glass and I say, okay, that is going to be smaller ellipse than this big one. Let's do the big one first. I'm doing this very light, and then I'll come in and darken it. But what you want is e an equal spacing all around this T. So if I bring this around, and then come up and keep these the same shape, and then these two the same shape. got an idea where my glass is and because this and this are the same it should connect up here once I do this ellipse so this ellipse is not quite as open and rounded as this one it's a little thinner and there's a taper that comes up here so this and this on the same yeah otherwise are similar, and then I'm going to just round them. Mm, might be a little bigger than that. Let's just go a little bigger. So these two should be the same shape, and then these two should be the same shape. No problem. Okay, I'm going to give you a call then. I'm going to meet you. And then what you're going to do is connect this dot to this dot. And just bring it down with a little bit of a, maybe a little bit of a bow if you want. And by making this shape the same as this shape. And then this can maybe just round into that. So by keeping all these with symmetry to them, I'm going to squish this up just slightly. Then it's starting to, um, it gives a lot of uh, symmetry to this by having these T's. Now, the last thing is the stem, and the stem kind of bows on both sides. So you want those two shapes to be the same. And then you come down to the skinny part of the stem. And there's a little ellipse here. And then a bigger one. So the bigger one, perspective-wise, really comes out. And what I want is another T underneath this.
want to bring this around. Let's see. From the bottom of the base to the top is not exactly the same, but it is close. So if I bring these lines down, that gives me here to here, and they should be the same. So this will go all the way out here and around, and then like that. So the, again, these two should be the same. They start behind the stem, but the ellipse should have the balance on each side. So I'm going to shrink it down just a little. And I'm still keeping these the same. So if I shrink one side, I'd shrink the other side. And then there's a depth uh, of thickness to the glass. That's pretty much. stem down just a tiny bit because it just looks a little strange. All right. Now, when you do your bottle, we'll do this bottle quickly. Um, we've got the top and the top is kind of squished up in there. So this might be a little bit just kind of the thickness of the bottle. So this is dark here. Comes down the same on both sides. Um, there's a little thickness that comes here. And then the neck keeps coming down. And the neck is still a little higher than the glass. So we've got a, a little higher than the glass. And we can put another ellipse here to help us with that curve. And make sure we've got a symmetry to it. And then um, the angle that you are seeing may not show the exact shape of this, but this is what we call a negative shape. There's a shape here in between the bottle, and there's a shape here, if I were to draw that line across, there's a shape that kind of bows in. So I've got the roundness of this, and then if I can just bring, let's see, this is the shoulder part of the bottle. I can maybe bring another one in here. I can start to bring this down. And actually connect here. And this, this is that other ellipse that was kind of like what this one is. So I can bring that on both sides again. to be equal, so here, to here, 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 to here. Everything has to be equal on both sides, and then equal this way, as far as the way it bows. And then we can look at that shape. straight down. Okay, and the last is the very base. This one's going to be open again like this. So I might actually bring that up slightly. Open it. So this curve. 
turns around like this. There's that bubble. Okay. <laughs> this is my real line right here. I just want you to be able to see it. So somewhere in there, these are gonna mimic each other. Okay, and then I have a couple of grapes, which are very organic. So we can kind of set them here a little bit of a, a point to them. Now when you uh, try and put the wine in, the wine is hitting, so you just kind of go above this ellipse and curve it. There'll be another ellipse if we really want to hit the back of that bottle with that. And when you're painting this, that's going to come in handy if you can get another ellipse going. And then the, your, um, your label will be another ellipse. And that will come down and another ellipse down here. you start, um, once you've mapped it out to this degree, then you can start, it's kind of like the fun begins because then you can <laughs> um, start shading. If you're going to do this just in pencil, you'd be putting, well, we didn't really get our wine in here and we have Platt Anderson Cellars uh, wine um, and the Oregon Solidarity. I thought that was a good choice. It's actually one of my favorite wines served here at Plant Anderson Cellars. So we have a lovely glass of wine. And having the ellipse again is very helpful because then we can um, make sure this reads. We got a little value here. You can start to do that in your drawing and then move to painting. But if this were watercolor, this would all have to be very light uh, pencil lines and then go into color. But um, obviously this is going to have value. There, will, there, were, there are some sparkles that you'd be putting in to all of this. But I just want to do this so it takes the ellipses out a little bit and shows you basically what you're gonna end up with. Um, there is a shadow that's pretty cool. It actually comes out here behind and it has a very round twist to it. And shadows are important in our drawings and paintings because they set things down so they're not floating. So the shadow is important. And I don't see one in the bottle except in the background here, and I, I just won't mess, mess with that. But um, the label, the bottle, everything ha is dark on this side, including where the wine is, which is here. And then the top of the wine is still darker than the bottle, but it's actually lighter than the side of the bottle. So I'll just do this a little darker and this a little lighter. And there's basically the start before you go to painting. It's similar to this, um, different bottle, different glass, but uh, I think they both kind of show where you're gonna move into painting. And that's it. 
And I thank Phil for filming and Gil for loaning his uh, space to me. And I wish you a great um, time for the rest of your Taste of Ashland. Cheers.